Coming up, the highest rated passer in NFL history. You have to wake up every day and look in the mirror and you want to be proud of the person who's looking back at you. Living legend Aaron Rodgers on his career. It takes a lifetime to build up a reputation and only one misstep for it all to crumble away. And the Packer way. That it's more important to be a good person than it is to just uh, play well on Sundays. On today's 700 Club. Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I've got a shocker for you today, as if you anything to shock people about what goes on in Washington. But it's really nauseating because it imperils our nation. Now, here's the story. The New York Times has a magazine, and it's published with interviews of various people. So they chose a presidential advisor who's a young man. He's about 37 years old. And he is the principal foreign policy advisor to President Obama, all right? Now, his name is Ben Rhodes. And you say, all right, he's a foreign policy advisor. What's his experience? Has he ever been in the armed forces? No. Has he ever been in the foreign service of the United States? No. Does he have any overseas experience other than that? No. Did he get any training in college about the government? No. What is his background? He is a fiction writer, okay? But he's the principal foreign policy advisor. So he tells the New York Times, this is all public, tells the New York Times that <clears throat> they were deliberately deceiving the American people about Iran. <clears throat> he said, they said, we've got to uh, work on this deal because there's an election coming up and the Iranians are going to put on a new uh, government of moderates, and we have to be ready for it. Turns out that they already had the policy in place. The deal was already done before any election came about. That was line number one. Line number two, or at least statement number two is, we're going to make Iran. Now get this. This is what this man said. He's the principal foreign policy advisor to the president of the United States. Has no experience at all, but he's in there. All right. <clears throat> he says, we are going to replace the cumbersome entanglements with Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Israel, Jordan, and Turkey with Iran. Iran is going to be our new partner. Now, a 10-year-old grammar school student would have had better sense than to think the leading sponsor of terrorism in the world was going to be our partner. But that's what was done. Now, this man went on to say, but the media was so gullible. They're only 27-year-olds. They have no knowledge whatsoever of the world, and we can put anything over on them because they're just a bunch of gullible uh, nincompoops. Now, this is, this is the highest level of our country, and these are the people making the decisions. And our, our allies, Saudis, they're aghast. The, the Israelis are aghast. The Jordanians, the Egyptians, the Turks, they're aghast. Like, what are you doing? You're, you're favoring this bunch of terrorists. Now, that was in the New York Times magazine. Ben Rhodes, 37-year-old, non-experienced, and he says he's got a, quote, mind meld. That's a Klingon term, I think, from <laughs> Star Trek, a mind meld with Obama. But isn't some of the responsibility on the press to know the backgrounds of these people, to understand he, what's he going on? He says they don't have any background to, to judge against. They're, they're illiterate. He says they're a bunch of sheep, and we can take advantage of them because the people covering the White House don't have any real-world experience. That's according to the man who's the spin master for the president. But Terry, the fact that they are deliberately lying and then they're telling the New York Times about it, kind of like laughing, like, look what we did. We pulled this one over on the American people. Well, I bet he's not laughing today. <clears throat> well, I don't, he, I mean, he I mean, ought to be. it's everywhere. Well, he ought to be fired. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's all over everywhere. But uh, I don't know if anybody's uh, noting it. 
But the, the, <laughs> the media must have been terribly uh, upset that this guy is laughing at them. But look what I did to you. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of government we've got. And you, you know, no wonder people want uh, uh, Donald Trump. They are so sick of somebody who would stick it in the eyes of the Saudis, the Egyptians, the Jordanians, the Turks, and our dear friends, the Israelis. How about and the media and the American public? <laughs> That's all that at one time, yeah. and laughing about it. That's the, of course they want somebody else who's tough and strong and, you know, warts and all. I mean, that's what we're getting, but we will have a President Trump because of the Ben Rhodes of this world. Wow. Whew. Okay, I've ranted well, it here. <laughs> but isn't that shocking? It is shocking. It's very shocking. Not surprising in some ways, but, but very shocking. This administration is a tissue of lies. If you like your health insurance, you can keep it yeah. lie. If you like your doctor, you can keep it lie. Your, the the uh, Affordable Care Act is going to lower your premiums, another lie. I mean, it just goes on and on and on of, of, of deception and lies. How soon will the American people wake up and say, we've had enough, yeah. enough? And the media. And the media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, from foreign policy to what's going on at home, North Carolina and the federal government are suing each other over the state's transgender bathroom bill. That case could affect bathrooms and locker rooms across the country because it could go to the Supreme Court. Dale Hurt has that story. A potentially epic clash over transgender rights took shape Monday after the U.S. Justice Department and North Carolina filed dueling lawsuits over the state's bathroom law. How to balance the expectations of privacy and equality in one of the most private areas of our lives. HB2, North Carolina's so-called bathroom law, requires transgender people to use the public restroom that matches the gender on their birth certificate. The Department of Justice said the law violates the federal civil rights of transgender people. We are seeking a court order declaring HB2's restroom restriction impermissibly discriminatory. Defenders of the law have argued it's needed to protect people, including children, from potentially being molested in bathrooms by, for instance, men who could simply say they're women to get into women's restrooms. North Carolina's governor is asking for legal and legislative clarity. We believe a court, rather than a federal agency, should tell our state, our nation, and employers across the country what the law requires. There's a massive amount of money at stake. One study found that North Carolina could lose up to $4.7 billion annually in federal education funding. This is not going to slow down. This is not going to go away. Businesses and entertainers such as Bruce Springsteen have boycotted North Carolina in protest of the law. Bruce Springsteen can write a song about being born in the USA, but we're here to tell you the USA is watching North Carolina, and we don't need Bruce Springsteen to come here and tell us how to operate our country. The bill is simply about protecting the safety, the privacy, and the welfare of women, children, and citizens in North Carolina. Several other states in recent months have proposed similar laws limiting protections for gay, bisexual, and transgender people. And the legal battle could culminate in a landmark Supreme Court decision. North Carolina's governor accused the Obama administration of rewriting federal civil rights laws to protect transgender people's access to bathrooms, locker rooms, and showers across the country. And he said because of that, this fight is now a national issue. Dale Hurd, CBN News. You know, if you're like me, I'm appalled. I'm simply appalled that the United States government, with all of its power and all of its money, is going to spend all this time and effort making sure that the fraction of 1% uh, of people who are so-called transgenders have, can go into the women's or the men's bathrooms. I mean, how absurd can you get? How does this become a great civil rights issue? You know, this is absurd. And if there is a shift in administration, and I think there's going to be from what the polls begin to show us, if there is a shift in administration, Loretta Lynch will be out on her ear. She will no longer be the Attorney General of the United States. And of course, that means that this particular suit by the federal government will be uh, dismissed by uh, the federal government. But 
to penalize the state billions of dollars, <clears throat> take away school funding because they don't want men going into women's bathrooms? I mean, isn't this awful? You just wonder, and they, they make a big, big civil rights thing about it. It's got nothing to do with civil rights. It's just absurd. It's merely part of the socialist, humanist agenda to destroy the Judeo-Christian fabric of this nation. That's what it's all about. We want to take away everything that you considered morality and everything you consider decency, and we're going to run roughshod over you. And if you don't like it, that's tough. We're going to penalize you as hard as we can. Don't think they're just being benign. This isn't defending people. No way under heaven. But uh, folks, this is America, and this is who you put in office. You elected him. I didn't elect him. You did. The American people. They put him in a couple terms. Well, in other news, voters are going to the polls and primaries today, and now a new survey shows, interestingly, that in key states, the must-win states, the race between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton looks very close. John Jessup has that story. That's right, Pat. The election is still six months away, but already analysts are looking ahead to how Trump and Clinton will square off in key states. And a new Quinnipiac University poll shows tight races in three of the most pivotal swing states. Clinton leads Trump by just one point, 43 to 42 percent in both Florida and Pennsylvania, while Trump leads Clinton 43 to 39 percent in Ohio. That amounts to a dead heat in all three states. Quinnipiac focuses on those because not since 1960 has a candidate gone on to the White House without winning at least two of those three states. Well, Israel is probably best known for its biblical history, a strong military, and cutting-edge technology. Now it's becoming known for something else, a world leader in diamonds. Chris Mitchell brings us that story from Jerusalem. The Israel Diamond Exchange has the largest trading floor in the world. Some say it's like shopping in a diamond supermarket. While you may have heard that diamonds are a girl's best friend, what you might not know is many of those diamonds come from Israel. Israelis have a very special knack in being able to run around the world and are very, in the most positive way possible, aggressively pursue business. And you see Israelis in New York all the time. You see Israelis in the Far East. And it's become a very important hub for global distribution of diamonds. David Lasher is managing director of New York's Diamond Dealers Club. New York is the bedrock of the world diamond industry. You know, over 40% of the world's diamonds are consumed by the U.S. Israel is a very important partner in moving the goods through the world and to the U.S. The Israel Diamond Exchange boasts some 3,500 members. Shmuel Schnitzer is the lifelong honorary president of the Israel Diamond Exchange. It's not easy to become a member here. You have to, to show your credibility in all aspects. Oddly enough, this diamond connection began in Europe because it was one of the few trades allowed to Jews. As Jews returned to the Holy Land, they brought their knowledge with them. It started in the 40s when uh, Jews that uh, ran away from uh, Europe came to Israel and uh, they built the industry here. Since then, thanks God, we are growing and growing. In 1940, we had 70,000 U.S. dollars exports. Today, we have about $7 billion only for Polish diamond export. There are no diamond mines in Israel. All of its gems are imported to be traded, cut, and polished. Israel does not deal in conflict diamonds, stones that are sold to finance civil wars and bloodshed in Africa. Even today, the industry is very family-oriented, passing the business from generation to generation. We are a family. My father is a diamond manufacturer uh, for 50 years. Yeah, and we, for 50 years, we, we manufacture diamonds. Me, myself, inside the business, I'm making diamond jewelry. And it's possible to spend a lot. This product, it's around $200,000. I have $150,000 to $200,000. The people that can buy this is all wholesaler or a, a jewelry factory. But why are diamonds so enduring? Schnitzer says it's a combination of women's love for diamonds and their lasting value. That could be why diamonds are forever. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. 
Thanks, Chris. And Pat, side note, next year, the Diamond Exchange celebrates its 80th anniversary. It's, it's amazing. You know, I personally uh, watched a Jewish diamond merchant in Antwerp. I looked, and there was a group of rough diamonds in front of him, and he went, $7,000. Wow. I've, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, the man was an expert, and somebody else would do the same thing. They'd come up with the same number. I mean, it, it was the, the incredible wisdom of these people is just absolutely extraordinary. Of course, the, 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 the main diamond industry is controlled by the beers out of South Africa. And Oppenheimer was Jewish, I guess, who was the head man of the beers. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, um, they, they do the cutting and the polishing of diamonds. But in Antwerp, the, 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 it's, it's a Jewish enterprise. They, they control the market, and they are brilliant at it, absolutely <laughs> brilliant. You know, you look at those things, and you say, well, it's a little hunk of rock with some sparkles. <laughs> but they know exactly how many carats. I mean, you know, That's all exactly the exactly right, whether clarity. it's flawed or not. <laughs> oh, baby. Well, I mean, it's something. But they, they, they can classify a group of rough, and, and the rough is hard to, to, to decide. When, once they're polished, it's different. But you, once they get those rough diamonds, then they've got to, to polish them and cut them. And many times there are flaws inside the rough they have to cut out. And then they, I mean, but these guys are brilliant. <laughs> but it, it's all done with, it's in their mind. It's not mm -hmm. some chart they have that they follow some uh, rules. They, they just know how to do it. They're brilliant at it. Yeah. So. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you knew that the, the Jewish people can. Well, I did. I've yeah. actually on trips to Israel. Yeah. We've actually gone into diamond factories and seen what they do there. It's pretty impressive. I, I got my wife a little brooch in Haifa some years ago, and it was so beautiful and so cheap. I mean, I just couldn't believe how cheap it was. Just I don't think it would be anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you but, got a deal. And there. we were right at the factory where they cut the things, yeah. and it was just, it was just gorgeous. So I mean, God bless them. Seven billion dollars. If, wow. if that helps Israel, I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, well, coming up, a pro-family advocate from the tiny nation of Georgia speaks out. If you think indecent radically sexual behavior is what you want to do, that's your choice. But if I think that this is an embarrassing sin, I want to remain in society which is allowed to say that. The fight to protect Georgia's faith and family values after this. Are you missing out on life because you're putting off neck or back surgery? Call Laser Spine Institute, the leader in minimally invasive spine surgery, to learn how a less than one inch incision can have you up and walking within a few hours of surgery, free from chronic back pain and with no hospital stay and no lengthy recovery. If you or a loved one have been diagnosed with spinal stenosis, bulging or herniated disc, sciatica or other chronic conditions, call today for your no cost MRI review. There were times my boss would send me home because I was in excruciating pain. Going to Laser Spine Institute, I go in, I have the procedure, and walk out a changed person, good to go back to work. I can't tell you how much happier I am. It's changed my life completely. If you've been told you might need neck or back surgery, call 1-844-629-BACK now for your no-cost MRI review. Laser Spine Institute, a less than one inch incision, a lifetime of standing tall. Tomorrow, hang 10. And it is exciting. Because these surfers are doing more than just catching waves. Father, I pray that the jellyfish would disappear. Plus, are you sick of getting sick? Find out how you can eat your way to health. Plus, watch this woman get back on her feet. I thank you, Lord, for healing me, God. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. Well, Georgia is a state in the south of America where the capital is Atlanta, and uh, they've got peaches and beautiful <laughs> girls and all that sort of thing, Georgia peach. But the Georgia we're talking about is a republic in uh, the former Soviet Union. It's one of the oldest Christian countries in the world. For centuries, numerous empires have tried to eliminate Christianity in this tiny nation. 
Now Georgia faces a new challenge to its values and its faith. This time, guess what? From the U.S. of A., George Thomas brings us the story. 25 years after the collapse of the Soviet Union, Georgia's prime minister says forging ties with the West is in his country's best interest. There is a very clear will of Georgian people and population to be pro-Western, to be pro-European. The tiny nation of Georgia lies between Russia and Turkey, while the majority here favor closer ties. We are not saying we are against West. I always say I'm a big enthusiast of selective Westernization of Georgia. Many like Lovan Vazadze insist the opening must not happen at the expense of Georgia's faith and family values. We'll take all the productive, progressive things from you, but we'll throw in garbage all the nonsense. And Unfortunately, in this particular case, this means your current pseudo-moral standards need to stay outside of Georgia. Vasadze is a prominent Georgian businessman and pro-family advocate. The pseudo-moral standards he refers to are efforts by the U.S. and E.U. to force Georgia into accepting homosexual practices and same-sex marriage as societal norms. If you think indecent radically sexual behavior is what you want to do, that's your choice. But if I think that this is an embarrassing sin, I want to remain in society which is allowed to say that. Much to his dismay, the Georgian parliament, under pressure from the European Union and with help from international pro-gay groups, passed a controversial law in 2014 making it illegal to discriminate against people on the basis of their sexual orientation. Vazadze says the decision amounted to the legalization of homosexuality in Georgia. You say this law is part of an international agenda. What is that agenda? To destroy a family. I, I, I believe the front line of this war is in every living room and in every bedroom where your wife and my wife, our children, sleep. The front line is now spreading to Georgian classrooms with children as young as eight being taught gender theory. To somehow alter and change... Tina Tin Khorbaladze is director of a pro-family organization. She says the aim is simple yet alarming. To change the thinking of the children, to be open and to accept the things that still my generation and elder generation consider to be not really acceptable. Georgia is deeply conservative. More than 80% of the population here say they belong to the Orthodox Church, and polls show a majority side with the Church in opposing anything other than traditional heterosexual relationships. We feel the responsibility for the future of this country, for the future of our children and next generation. But not everyone agrees with the Church's stance on marriage. Some human rights groups have labeled this country one of the most homophobic nations in the world. Are you afraid for your life? Um, As for me personally, yes, because my life is in danger in Georgia, and not just because of my sexual orientation, but because of my professional activities as well. Georgi Tatashvili is transgender. He rarely gives interviews, but agreed to meet with CBN News at an undisclosed location in the capital. He is a lawyer for the LGBT community and says he has paid a price for it. They've arrested you, they've beaten you. Yes, many times I was beaten by policemen, ordinary citizens, and in general for many people. Tatishvili made headlines earlier this year when he became the first person ever to file a suit with the Constitutional Court seeking same-sex marriage. The lawsuit is still pending. A majority of Georgians today believe that what you're doing, your lifestyle, is sinful. And they say that you are destroying their country. I think that this is the case, and I'm not surprised people feel this way. The principles of secularism are practically violated in Georgia. The Orthodox Church puts so much pressure on the society to make sure Georgian human rights are not extended to include LGBT people. Meanwhile, Levan Vazadze worries the pressure to become more accepting of homosexuality in Georgia will only intensify following last year's controversial Supreme Court decision 
legalizing same-sex marriage in America. He bemoans the fact that since the ruling, many in America are too afraid to speak out against homosexuality. You can no longer freely express your opinion about what's shameful and what is disgraceful, and you are uh, crucified for that. The whole concept of sin is being abolished. Where is it? Uh, the metamorphosis in English language is staggering. I studied it since I was a child, and I remember that shame meant shame. In modern English, when someone says it's a shame, he or she means it's a pity. So we see a gutting of the concept of shame. Vazadze is praying Georgia never reaches that point. He's urging his fellow countrymen to be bold in proclaiming the truth in love. Is it your opinion that the church in Georgia, Christians in Georgia like yourself, are in the end going to determine the future of your country? What else? Of course. That's it. Nothing else. George Thomas, CBN News in Tbilisi, the Republic of Georgia. Well, that's the side of the world most of us don't know too much about, and I appreciate uh, George for bringing us that story. You know, the truth is, from what we understand in history, there hasn't been one nation in the history of the world that has openly embraced homosexual uh, lifestyle and begun to practice the homosexual lifestyle uh, that has endured. Every one of them has gone down, every single one of them. Once right homosexuality takes place, then people don't take care of their children. They, they aren't concerned about the next generation. They're concerned about physical uh, pleasure and, and uh, the activities surrounding this lifestyle. And they, they aren't planning for the future, and the, the country goes to, to pot. Right now, it's, it's you know, kind of in the balance. It's kind of interesting. But the fact that the European Union and the U.S. are trying to impose this lifestyle on a little country like Georgia that wants to stay orthodox is it's incredible. But, uh, you know, you, you look at the book of Revelation, and it says, Mystery, uh, mother of harlots, uh, you have made the world drunk with the wine of your fornication. And, you know, you, you say, well, who is that? mystery woman. Well, more and more, this great nation of ours, the U.S. of A., is becoming uh, to take on that role. I don't know if we intend to, but that's what's happening. We're making the nations drunk with the wine of our fornication. And uh, God brings judgment on the country that does that. Terry? Well, up next, Aaron Rodgers reflects on the ever-increasing spotlight on NFL players. The coverage is at an all-time high. Everybody has, uh, you know, Twitter, you have Facebook. It takes a, a career, a lifetime to build up a reputation and only one misstep for it all to crumble away. Green Bay's two-time MVP and Super Bowl champ talks about the Packer way after this. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it, and folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge, from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The Secret War is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. Would you like to be a Publishers Clearinghouse winner next month? You could win $2 million plus $10,000 a month for life and a new car. Go to PCH.com and enter now. June 30th, you could win it all. I'm the first person to graduate in my family. The professors were just amazing here. 
the spiritual life on campus is like nowhere else. The online program offered me the flexibility that I needed. I came for the education, but what I got was really a family. Regent University and you, it's your time. Thrill, thrill to talk about Regent. Uh, Regent University just had the largest graduation in its history, 1,707 graduates uh, from various disciplines, doctoral, master's programs. Uh, the university has added 50 uh, new programs in the last couple of years, and it is now from all the indication we can have, of all the statistics, it is the fastest growing university in America. Wow, wow. The, the fastest of all the universities because the, the for-profit universities are actually in decline, yeah. some as much as 10 or 20% down. Uh, the state universities are either holding level or going down just a sh slight bit. And Region is up this summer like 260% or something. Wow, that's it's unbelievable. amazing. It's unbelievable. So um, yeah, there's still room for you. You know, there's a <laughs> song, there's room at the cross for you, there's room at Regent for you. Um, it offers nearly 100 degree programs and concentrations. And one that's coming up this fall is going to be really exciting. It's one that I wanted after meeting Hugh Ross. It's going to be called Cosmogony. And it's going to be a master's degree, but it'll also be a specialty. And those in the School of Divinity uh, are going to have uh, that as a compulsory course. So when they get through, they will be experts on why the world started, where it started, how it wow. started, and all that. So if somebody comes along with all this Darwinism, they'll have an answer to it that is intelligent based on good science. Anyhow, uh, it has been voted one of the top 10 best online schools uh, for veterans, and it's really terrific. So here's the numbers, 866-910-7618. you got to dial a 1 on that. Or it's, uh, it's now.regent.edu. All right, 1-866-910-7618. And um, they can get something to you right away. But classes start, they're... they're there are uh, distinct periods during the year uh, where you can enroll. It's mm -hmm. eight week um, uh, term, so you can start another and another and another. So it's, you can call in. It's not just you have to wait till September or you have to wait till June or something. It's, it's open right now. So call in. People are on the phone. They'd be glad to talk to you. Terry? Speaking of glad to talk to, I'm glad to talk about yes. my favorite team. Oh, the yeah. <laughs> Yay, Packers. Go yes. Packers. Right. The Green Bay Packers, Aaron Rodgers, is a two-time MVP Super Bowl champion and the highest-rated passer in NFL history. His conduct and his character also make him a standout in the high-profile world of professional sports. Plus, he's the embodiment of what's known as the Packer way. Well, recently he sat down with reporter Tom Buring to talk about what motivates him to excellence in sports and integrity. Aaron Rodgers has earned a place among the NFL's elite with a well-rounded grasp on his opportunity to lead the league's most iconic franchise and embody the meaning of being a Green Bay Packers quarterback. When you get drafted by this team, you, you understand that it's you got such a rich tradition of excellence. So what you learn when you come here is that there's an expectation that you carry yourself uh, the right way in the community. We, we have guys who buy into the Packer way. And I think a lot of that goes back to Vince Lombardi and Bart Starr and the groundwork that they laid, that it's more important to be a, a good person than it is to just uh, play well on Sundays. The two-time NFL MVP is also a Super Bowl MVP giving Aaron that rare Packers quarterback distinction that's shared only with Bart Starr. I was fortunate enough to meet him in 2006 at FanFest for the first time, and me being a, a, a lover of history and, and, uh, and all things NFL, I was really excited to meet him, knowing uh, that he was the uh, first two of MVP and everything that uh, the organization stands for, that uh, it was a big thrill for me. All of Aaron's 11 seasons have been with Green Bay, but only eight as a starter. In 2008, his quarterbacking predecessor, Brett Favre, was traded. It was the iconic star who helped soften the transition. As, as Brett was leaving and, and I was 
to come in and take over the starting role. Um, Bart starts sending me some emails. At a time where you know there's a lot of turmoil with the fans and the changeover and me trying to kind of start my own deal here as a leader and a player, uh, and Bart's uh, you know real calming words about uh, just uh, staying true to who you are and, and believing in yourself, and you know he believed in me as well. It was pretty special. I was very touched. How important is that authenticity in demonstrating that? You know, you have to wake up every day and look in the mirror and, and uh, you want to be proud of the person who's looking back at you. And you can only do that if you're being honest with yourself and being a person of high character. You have an opportunity every single day to, uh, to write that story of your life. On the field, he's a general who leads by example, while off the field accountability keeps him grounded, helping him avoid the pitfalls of notoriety. Surround yourself with really good people. I think that's an important thing because the people you surround yourself are a reflection of you. There's always situations that you could put yourself in where people could look at you differently. In our league, especially right now, it's a hot button topic because there's uh, the coverage is at an all time high. Everybody has, uh, you know, Twitter, you have Facebook. It takes a, a career, a lifetime to build up a reputation and only one misstep for it all to crumble away. He also knows when to step in, having fun photobombing on sidelines and red carpets. But Aaron prefers keeping his community involvement and generous philanthropy concealed. What compels you to give? It's just something inside me that knows that I've been blessed. We all uh, should be pulling for each other in the same direction. And the way to do that is to, uh, is to find opportunities to give back donating uh, anonymously, which I enjoy doing um, because I don't want any of the credit. I think the, the credit should go to uh, uh, where it's coming from, who has provided for you and the opportunities you've been given. In the debate of top dog quarterbacks, it's Aaron's combined skill set that contributes to his forte. Efficiency, minimizing mistakes, and leading scoring drives that has made him the highest rated passer in NFL history. His life decisions are similarly decisive, straightforward, and experience-based. Who is Jesus Christ to you? What does he mean to you? I was modeled what Jesus Christ was all about when I was in high school and spent some time with a great organization called Young Life. And that introduced me to what it means to live the right way. We all have different experiences, uh, subcultures in the Christian faith that have either turned us off to it or I rubbed us the wrong way based on uh, some exclusivity that, that doesn't really make sense in this world. And, and uh, I think Jesus was the opposite of that. Playing at a position that requires results and living a life that embraces faith, the quarterback puts emphasis on action. One of my favorite sayings was St. Francis of Assisi who said, preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words. I think what that means at its core is that uh, People are gonna be interested in what you're all about more by the way you conduct yourself and what comes out of your mouth. And I think that's what it's all about. From a field where careers are defined and legacies are made, Aaron Rodgers is establishing his. The accomplished playmaker revels in the example of a play worth making. I think Jesus was about bringing people together and connecting people in love, um, hanging out with the people who other people didn't wanna hang out with, spending time with the worst of the worst because he knew that uh, those are the people who needed it most. And uh, I just I really appreciate that uh, about him and reading that about him and, and people who want to spread that message. Well, isn't that refreshing, yeah. can I just say? want to just Fabulous. take time to say we are in Wisconsin, the real oh, cheese people. Told. And uh, Is that going to be a hat? Or are you that just is gonna... a hat. Look, that is that a hat. That is a hat. My. What you wear on game days, don't oh. you know? Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> you don't eat these, you wear it. One will be arriving at your house shortly. Yeah, I can hardly wait. All right. Thank well, he's you. a wonderful guy, and he's very right. Bart Starr sort of set the bar, and yeah. he's continuing it. So. Well, Brett Favre, was, uh, you know, his wife was here, and a nice lady, and Brett yes. was incredible. He, he, he was as plucky as anybody I could imagine. He was beat to pieces, and he just kept on playing and playing and yeah. playing. It's just amazing. Yes. We've had some wonderful players in Green Bay over yeah, the years. Yeah. Well, really have. Great ethos tradition. Ethos or whatever. That, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> congratulations to the Cheeseheads. Yeah. All, right. <laughs> All right. We thank you. It's time to bring it on with some of your email questions. So, Pat, this first one comes from Miriam, who says, Dear Pat, my husband did a terrible thing years ago that I didn't know about until two days ago. Someone else discovered it, and for that reason I want to separate we have two teenage girls who are close to him should I tell them the truth or not I'm afraid it's going to destroy them for life because they believe in him he has been a good father and has always been there for them please help me well what I'll help you is that 
I don't know what he did. You won't tell me. Um, did he kill somebody? Was it homosexual? Was did he cause an abortion? What did he do that was so terrible? Whatever it is, God forgives. God will forgive him, and you need to forgive him. It looks like something way in the past. Why would you rip your family up on account of something that took place 20 years ago? That doesn't make any sense at all. So the thing it is, you just say, look, God forgave you, and I'll forgive you. Let's get mm -hmm. on with our life. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because right. it would rip up her children's lives. Oh, it'd be, it'd be insane. I mean, yeah. why would you bring out something that took place years and years ago? I mean, it's done. Yeah. This is Rhonda who says, Pat, why do Christian people in the church treat each other so badly? Wow. Plus, there seem to be cliques in the church, but isn't that wrong? Jesus said to love one another. It seems to me I keep seeing Christian women and some men acting ugly and rejecting other men and women in the church. How does one go about trying to change that? The Bible says we're the Lord's sheep, but sheep sure do bite sometimes and they leave a nasty mark. Um, I think your question answers itself. I don't think, why do people act that way? Because they're sinners, and, and yeah. uh, uh, the Bible says the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who could know it? And I, I think our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked. But we come to the Lord, and the Lord forgives us, and then uh, sanctification is a gradual process of, of becoming more and more like Jesus. And so people in the church haven't gotten more and more like Jesus. Uh, but, the, you know, why do they act that way? Because they are human beings, sinners, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. That's all the time we That's have for your the, questions okay, today, but those were two good ones. Um, well, coming up, we want you to meet a wife and mother who was blindsided by devastating news. And that was diagnosed with a stage three brain cancer. I looked through scripture in particular and found over and over again, God's steadfast love to his people. Lauren Chandler talks about that steadfast love and her husband's miraculous healing. That's later on today's 700 Club. If you've ever considered getting a walk-in tub, we have great news. No more cold seats. For a limited time, when you purchase a Safe Step walk-in tub, we'll upgrade your order to include our newest feature, a heated seat. That's a $600 value, free. But that's not all. The new and improved dual hydrotherapy system now has foot massaging jets to help soothe aching feet. And a micro bubble jet that produces bubbles so small they can penetrate pores to help remove dirt and toxins, leaving your skin ultra soft. And as always, Safe Step walk-in tubs are built to maximize safety so you can stay in your home and enjoy the comforts of bathing again. Call the number on your screen now for more information and a free, no obligation consultation. Our new walk-in tub is affordable and could change your life. Call 800-669-1144. That's 800-669-1144. And welcome back to the 700 Club. The American Civil Liberties Union is suing Mississippi over its new religious freedom law. The measure says people and businesses don't have to serve same-sex weddings if they don't want to because of their religious beliefs. Dr. Ryan Anderson from the Heritage Foundation told CBN News the law protects people's diverse beliefs. The Mississippi law says if you believe marriage is the union of a man and a woman, that sex is reserved for marriage, and that we're created male and female. It doesn't say you have to believe those things, but it says if you do believe those things, we're not going to penalize you if you act on those beliefs. Several states have also taken action to protect religious freedom since the Supreme Court legalized same-sex marriage last year. The first Muslim Miss USA winner, Rima Faki, has reportedly converted to Christianity. A Middle East news site, Al Bawaba, says the former Shiite Muslim and Lebanese American model gave her life to Christ a month before her upcoming wedding. She will be marrying Catholic music, music producer Wasim Salibi on May 15th. In late March, she tweeted a picture of herself with a scripture, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you can find out more about this story and always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Introducing the all new Turbo 10 from Nutrisystem. Lose up to 10 pounds your first month, guaranteed. 
Lose your first 10 pounds fast with the all-new Turbo 10 from Nutrisystem. Your 10 can turn into 20, 30, 50, even more. I'm Marie and I lost 50 pounds on Nutrisystem. You'll see results right away. Count, measure, meetings, uh, not with Nutrisystem. Order your 28-day plan right now and we'll rush you Turbo 10. Get specially designed meals, plus one week of Nutri-Crush shakes to crush hunger free. And one week of new Turbo shakes to help bust belly bloat free. Bye-bye, stubborn belly fat. Plus FedEx shipping absolutely free. With Turbo 10, you'll lose up to 10 pounds fast. You'll love it. Money back guaranteed. Millions of people have lost weight on Nutrisystem and you can too. Your first 10 pounds, gone. Call 877-530-SIZE and get Turbo 10 with Shakes Free. To listen to our top songs of the week, go to CBN Radio at CBN.com. When a baby boy in India was born with a cleft lip, his parents knew he needed surgery. The problem was that many days those parents couldn't even afford to eat. Baby Kumar was born with a cleft lip. His mother, Parwathi, didn't know if her son would live to see his first birthday. Because of his cleft lip, he had a very hard time drinking milk. He was weak and not gaining weight. She found out that his cleft lip could be fixed through surgery but it would cost nearly $330. My husband doesn't even earn enough for us to always eat. And we don't own a piece of land or a house to sell. We were so sad because we couldn't do anything to help our baby. But then CBN came to their village and offered free cleft lip operations. During Kumar's surgery, Parwathi and her husband were nervous but hopeful, knowing this surgery could change their child's life. On Kumar's first birthday, his whole family had lots to celebrate. We are so happy to see Kumar laughing and smiling after his surgery. Now he is able to eat and drink well, and he loves playing around. He's gaining weight and getting strong. We thank you so much for all your help. And it's so wonderful to be able to help a child. You know, we have had many cases of people who are blind because of cataracts, and we've had many people with cleft palates. The cleft palates are expensive. The operation is anywhere between $350 and $500, whereas a, a, a eye surgery uh, with an interocular lens costs about $90. But just to think, these people don't have enough money. They didn't have three or four hundred dollars. Three or four hundred was enough to change somebody's life. That young boy was going to grow up disfigured and grow into adulthood, wouldn't be able to get married, probably wouldn't be able to get a job, wouldn't be able to eat properly all his life. So by your help and our help, we went in and fixed him. So you might want to participate. We've got something that's called heaven. There's some of the most marvelous stories of people who actually died and went to heaven. And we've got a noted cardiologist who's going to talk about heaven and the patients that he's had that have been there. So we'll give this to you when you join the 700 Club. And that's 65 cents a day. Terry? Well, speaking of talking about yeah. heaven, this is Jeanette. I love where she lives, Paradise, California. She's already watched the DVD, and she says, I love the Heaven DVD. What a wonderful and blessed hope we have in Christ to know what and who awaits those who believe in Him. God bless you and thank you. You're going to love it, too, so let us hear from you. Join Amen. the 700 Club. You'll be doing something good, and you'll be blessed by the Amen. DVD as well. Amen. So. Well, up next, Wait. she's the worship leader at her husband's 10,000-member church. Lauren Chandler talks about the steadfast love that helped her cope with her husband's terminal diagnosis and believe for his miraculous recovery. That's coming up. She's here. And I don't... Are you missing out on life because you're putting off neck or back surgery? 
Call Laser Spine Institute, the leader in minimally invasive spine surgery, to learn how a less than one inch incision can have you up and walking within a few hours of surgery, free from chronic back pain and with no hospital stay and no lengthy recovery. If you or a loved one have been diagnosed with spinal stenosis, bulging or herniated disc, sciatica or other chronic conditions, call today for your no-cost MRI review. When you're in that much pain and you live on painkillers, you really don't have quality of life. I feel like Laser Spine Institute was an answer to prayer. It's just the heavens had opened up and it was like, I can live again. If you've been told you might need neck or back surgery, call 1-844-628-BACK now for your no-cost MRI review. Laser Spine Institute, a less than one inch incision, a lifetime of standing tall. Chandler was a pastor's wife and the mother of three young children. And then one day, her husband collapsed on the living room floor and the bottom fell out of her world. Lauren Chandler remembers the exact moment her life changed. Uh, Matt was diagnosed with a stage three brain cancer. As I was trying to just find somewhere to just have stability, I looked through scripture in particular and found over and over again, God's steadfast love to his people. In her book, Steadfast Love, Lauren shares what she uses as an anchor during times of trouble and throws us the life preserver we'll need to weather any storm. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Lauren Chandler. It's great to have you here. So glad to be here, thank you. Tell us a little bit about what happened that day in 2009. It must have been totally shocking to you. It was, I mean, it was just like any other Thanksgiving morning where I'm getting dishes ready to take over to my mom's for lunch later that day. And then all of a sudden I hear just this commotion in the room right next to me. And I walk in and I don't see Matt, but I see my three kids and I hear this, cl this clattering of our, our fireplace irons and I see on the floor Matt is his whole body shaking in the midst of a grand mal seizure. I mean completely out of nowhere. He was wow. probably the healthiest he'd been in his, his entire life. You were told that Matt had, I mean he went, he was diagnosed, mm -hmm. doctors looked at him with no, no previous indication of right. this that he had a limited time to live. What was the diagnosis? Um, they, after an eight hour resection, uh, the pathology wow. came back um, as an anaplastic oligodendroglioma grade Good three, grief. which um, when I asked the surgeon, I was like, what does this mean? Like, what is his life expectancy? And he said, it's typically two to three years. And so, I mean, that was just a kick in the gut. I here he was, just healthy and in good shape, and no prior history, no headaches even. Yeah. Um, it, but the one, the one thing that evidence of this tumor was this the seizure on wow. Thanksgiving Day. You know, we try to live in the now with the power of Christ in our lives. But yeah. when you get a diagnosis like yeah. that, and you're a young mom, mm -hmm. and you've got three little kids. You're looking down the road and I'm sure your heart is just flooded with anxiety and fear. What did you go through? Oh, it was so when they gave us the diagnosis, I was in a room with the doctor and, and one other uh, person, one of the other lead pastors at our church. Um, and I remember coming out of that room and seeing my parents, Matt's parents, our friends, the couples. And none of them knew and that. No, none of them knew. And then if, even seeing them together and, and even though, you know, life together, whatever we have left in our life is sort of an illusion. We don't know how right. long we have. It seemed like Matt and, and me, our, our marriage had this expiration yeah. date on wow. it. And so to look at them and think, I want to be like them where I, there's no expiration date on my marriage, but you can just keep living life together. So, I mean, it was hard. So what did you do during that time? I'm sure there was a, a spiritual scramble for mm. a while, but mm. then it was the word of God that brought you strength. Absolutely. Well, and I would say there was a scramble and, and that, that's what I would want to tell people who maybe are on, you know, this side of, yeah. a, of a trial of a storm where they're like, am I going to be okay through this storm? Is God even who yeah, he says he is? is. He? Yeah. And I will say that I found him to be exactly who he said he would be, yeah. that he provided peace that surpassed understanding, that he was with me, that uh, the body of Christ surrounded me, and that his word was true, that I found a lot of comfort in, 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 in the word, in the Bible, uh, his promises 
of being with us, uh, of being our stability in times of distress, and of his steadfast love being sure and enough to to hold us in that. When did you first draw strength from Psalm 107? Well, it was actually a couple of years before um, I uh, this trial. I had a friend who said, hey, I want you to read Psalm 107. I, she was a very prophetic friend. She said, I think there's something significant here. And so I read it and it's, you know, the story of four different yeah. groups of people in different distresses in the desert, in chains, suffering from their own folly and caught in a storm. And so I remember reading through this and being able to identify with every part of it. I'd yeah. been the de in the desert, I'd been in chains. And this I'd, was before your husband's yes, scenario. Yes, it was before yeah. this. So, you know, we all can, mm -hmm. can identify with this psalm. You know, the struggles in our lives all pretty much bring us to the point of really understanding the magnitude of God. And that was true for you, even in the midst of a terrible diagnosis. Yeah. What did God teach you? He, ta he taught me that he is exactly who he says he is and that he is enough yeah. to um, provide stability. I think that's one word. And, and even uh, in my book, there's a picture of an anchor on it. Um, just this idea of stability in uncertain times. Yeah. And, and all of our times are uncertain. We never yes. know what tomorrow is going to bring. Um, we don't know what next week has for us, but we can always trust in God's steadfast love that he showed through his son, Jesus. You know, we talked about Matt's diagnosis, but where is he at today? Pretty amazing. Uh, praise God. He is cancer free. He has been um, since, they, since the surgery. They've had no evidence of disease. Um, he has been free of any brain tumor. There have been little to no side effects. You both believed, even before that diagnosis, that God would heal him. Yes. Um, we had some friends uh, that are a little more charismatic than we are, <laughs> brothers and sisters in Christ, and so grateful for their yeah. gift to us. And uh, one man had told Matt that there would be um, a circumcision of sorts that would make him uh, the father of many sons. Wow. And, you know, Matt thought it was had to do with just some reorganizing in the, in the church, but really it was a literal circumcision, like a, a cut in his uh -huh. head that that he believed um, would give him a place to speak into to young men's lives, pastors' lives, and that he would survive it. Yeah. You need to read the whole story. It's in Lauren's book, and it's called Steadfast Love. It'll build your faith. It's available where books are sold. Thank you so much Thank for being for with us today. Me. It's a wonderful story of a God who never changes. Pat? Thanks, Terry. Well, we leave you folks with today's Power Minute from 1 Corinthians. <laughs> Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And tomorrow, the sugar detox and buy it that could reverse your disease. Do it naturally. We'll tell you about it. In the meantime, remember our telephones are available. Please call if we can help you. We're there for you uh, 24 hours a day. 1-800-759-0700. So for Terry and Wendy and all of us, this is Pat Robertson. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.